Okay, so I had quite a successful tuning session this morning and uh, I'll just take you through uh, what I did. Um, there is a full tuning guide on the wiki uh, that you can see. Um, let's show this. There we go. So you can see there's a full tuning guide on the wiki about setting parameters and I followed uh, some of this and also used uh, Alt A on Mission Planner to set up some of the parameters, um, and I covered some of those in the previous previous videos. Uh, so let's move that out of the way. So, um, so if you remember, I've only only did a gentle hover in stabilize in my office. So um, the next thing to do was do a proper hover in a field. Uh, in particular to get the value of the hover throttle correct because you can't unless you've got the hover throttle set correctly nothing else will pan out well in, in particular auto tune won't pan out well so uh, a few things I set so I figured out which channel uh, which switch I wanted to use and I set so uh, RC8 and I set RC8 to auto tune which is 17 function 17 here um, and I also set auto tune axes to uh, actually set this to three which is tune roll and pitch um, you could tune all of them at all at the same time but I just chose to do just roll and pitch uh, and then I also reduced min D so that the uh, value for um, Default value for D, I think, is 0 0.001, and uh, might even be higher than that. 0 0.002, do something like that. No, 0 0.001 here. Um, and uh, I find for smaller copters that's not low enough, uh, and uh, you don't want to sort of run the risk of D not being able to go low enough. So I've, I tend to start my tunes with min D set to 0 0003 and you can sort of ignore the, the warning you get from Mission Planner and that works out quite well. And having it too low is okay, it's safe, it just means it might take longer to, to, to tune. Uh, so that was my auto-tune setup. I also made a, just a couple of modifications to the battery. I set my battery capacity correctly to 3000 uh, milliamp hours. Uh, I set the low milliamp hours to 20% um, of the battery capacity to 600 milliamp hours and also I just checked that I wasn't if, if I hit a battery fail safe nothing was going to happen so critical action and low action are both set to zero here so nothing will happen if the battery hits a, hits a fail safe um, and then I did my flight and uh, that seemed to go pretty well in, st in stabilize uh, and that went pretty well uh, and so once I'd done a, a, a short hover I landed and uh, downloaded the log and you can see it here so this is the log so I'm looking at C-ton throttle out um, and uh, you can get the you can get the copter to learn the hover thrust automatically um, but I find that that can take a bit too long and it's, it's e I find it easier just to eyeball it so you can see I did a, 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 a hover here and the hover thrust is about well <laughs> I was doing it in a field so I thought it was 0.13 but actually that's a bit low so it's actually about more like 0.14 I would say um, so I set it to 0.13 and uh, then took off again and uh, this time flew in stabilize and then um, while I was flying in stabilize switched to alt hold to see whether that worked okay and that actually did work fine and then because I had good GPS lock and I was sort of reasonably confident with my GPS setup I then switched to pause hold 
and again that that um, worked fine I, the reason I did that was I, I just find although although you get the best tune auto tune in alt hold I find that this day needs to be really really still and you need to have a big area for that to work effectively and so um, it's often quite windy here so I Pulse hold is just much more convenient to, to run auto tune in in a confined space. Uh, so then I ran, uh, so then I took off again. I uh, in um, pulse hold got to a stable hover, switched into auto tune, and auto tune did its thing. Uh, and to complete it successfully, it was a little bit, uh, I got a video of that, there was a little bit of. Um, oscillation on pitch which was a bit scary but the truth is that was because uh, my manual tune well it wasn't a manual tune was it it was just a, a very poor basic tune wasn't very good and so it was just oscillation because the pits were too high uh, and once auto tune had um, done its business uh, I landed disarmed the auto tune parameters were saved and then I did the same for your so I set the your um, I said auto tune axes uh, to four to do your, uh, and uh, that worked successfully. I'm actually going to set this to now. I've got a tune. I'm going to set this to seven, which means tune all at once. And I think uh, the battery lasts long enough to make that uh, effective. And uh, if we look at my extended tuning panel, you can now see that I've got the um, the uh, tuned values uh, in here and so um, our roll has been uh, reduced a little bit uh, you can see D, it, D actually ended up being 0 0.001 for both of these quite high values of D which seemed okay uh, and then the, the the acid test of whether auto tuners work successfully or not are these P values here stabilize roll pitch and your so 18 is the maximum and so if you get a stabilized roll p value of 18 that means you got a pretty decent tune similarly for pitch you can see that your is not so high um, so it wasn't maybe there's too much noise coming through but uh, still 13 is pretty respectable anything below you know down in the sort of six or seven and then that then you've got problems uh, so uh, that's as far as I got with the tune. Um, I also had a look at, uh, I, I logged with um, uh, FFT data as well to have a look at, at that, and that looked pretty good. Uh, so, um, so I'm now gonna make some adjustments to the tune that uh, uh, Leonard suggested, but also based on the, on the, uh, the, the wiki page. Uh, so I'm actually going to, since I don't seem to have a lot of noise coming through, I'm going to increase the gyro filter to 80. And then I'm also going to, let's write that. And then I'm going to reduce the Excel filter to 10. So Leonard thinks this will get a much smoother tune, so we'll see how that goes. And then on the actual tuning, uh, so filt D is at 40, which is about half. I'm going to change filt T to 40 as well. I think that's fine. Filt T to 40. And then I'm going to set the hover thrust to point uh, I did set it to point one four there we go point one four hover thrust um, and then the wiki also tells you how to get good old hold behavior and this involves um, changing uh, a couple of parameters so if we go back to extended tuning here uh, so you basically want the uh, Excel Z 
I value to be double the hover thrust. So you can see that that's actually way, way more than that. So I'm going to set that to double the hover thrust, 0.28. And then you want the P value to be the hover thrust. And you can see again, that's way, way too high. So I'm going to set that to, oops, uh, didn't let me do that. So I'm going to actually um, change this in the full parameter list. So, PSC, Excel Z, so I want I to be 0.28, and then I want P to be 0.14. Yep, don't care that it's out of range. Uh, I'm going to write that out. Okay. And uh, that seems pretty good for now. So what I'll, when I get some good weather again, what I'm going to do is uh, run auto tune again. So I've made made a few small modifications. Um, it's always important to uh, run auto tune whenever you make any any kind of, uh, especially for instance, if you change the gyro filter value, the hover thrust. Uh, the motor expo, any of those kind of values, you need to run auto tune again because it changes the sort of parameters of, of how it works. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to do some um, stable hovers with the tune I've got to see what kind of noise um, I'm getting through. And uh, when I've done that, uh, we can look at those graphs. Okay, so here's how it looked. Okay, it's Sunday morning. I'm out in a local field here. Uh, it's dead still and it's probably the only opportunity I'm going to get to do some initial test flights before the rain comes in again. It's supposed to be very windy this afternoon, so I'm going to do an uh, initial test flight of stabilise, check everything's going well, work my way up to alt-hold, check that that works, uh, and then possibly pause-hold and if that's all good, I'll go for an auto tune, try and get uh, an initial tune, uh, which would be awesome. So I did the uh, did the hover, and uh, um, then looked at the graphs that we saw earlier. Okay, and that was pretty successful. So I took off in stabilize, um, uh, hovered in stabilize and uh, then adjusted the hover throttle to match what I could see in the, the, the logs. Um, and then I took off and stabilized again, switched to hold, good control. I was feeling lucky, so I switched to pause hold because I got 15 sats, 0.8 each dot. And that was also good, so good control. Um, the vibes, the Y vibes are a little high for my liking, but I think within the bounds of reasonableness for now. So uh, I think next step is is auto-tune. And then finally, I did the auto-tune. So this is in household auto-tune, nice and stable. I do roll and pitch to start with, and then if I have enough battery, I'll do your. So all in all, a successful first day's tune.